I was watching some interview the other day where this commentator was talking about how the Fed can't keep interest rates low for an indefinite period of time. This person was someone who had been predicting that interest rates would rise sharply, spike even, because of our debt, and that we'd experience hyperinflation and the U.S. dollar would collapse along with the economy. But of course, none of his predictions came true. But he continues to talk about the interest rate thing. And, you know, you could see his frustration boiling over when he spoke about how the Fed could not keep interest rates down indefinitely. It was artificial, he said. And you could see his frustration bubbling up. And this is a frustration that stems from not understanding mon monetary policy and the fact that the central bank, the Fed, is the one that sets interest rates, pure and simple. And if the Fed wants to keep rates at zero forever, <laughs> it has the power to do that without any problem at all. And since all rates, all the way along the term structure, not just short term, but all the way out, are a function of Fed policy, because they're tied to the expectation of Fed policy over the term, then the Fed, by definition, also controls long-term rates. The fact is, all rates are anchored by Fed policy, and there's no amount of moaning about artificial this or artificial that that can cause that not to be true, whether it's by this person or any other person for that matter. The Fed has the power to create unlimited amounts of reserves, and by adding and maintaining sufficient reserves in the banking system, it can keep rates low for as long as it wants, period. This person is just ignorant and doesn't understand that, nor does he understand that a country that issues its own money gets to determine what rate it pays on that money. And by the way, if you think about it, paying interest on your own money that you can issue freely is really a stupid thing to begin with. And somebody ought to ask why the United States the monopoly issuer of the U.S. dollar is paying interest on those dollars, which it need not do because those dollars are not borrowed. It's unbelievably stupid. The other thing that's unbelievably stupid is the constant complaining about our so-called debt, which is not a debt at all, but rather the amount of dollars that have been issued by the federal government in excess of what it has taken away from us in taxes since the very beginning. Yeah, the birth of the republic. And since 1789, the federal government has issued 16.7 trillion more dollars than it confiscated from us in taxes. And those are dollars that we own, not owe. So what's there to pay back? And who's the debtor here? The government for having issued its own money? Us for owning that money? When we say pay it back, pay it back to who? Ourselves? We are the government. Just It says it right there in those immortal first words of the Constitution. We the people. Remember? Just because those dollars sit mostly in treasuries doesn't mean it's a debt. And by the way, for anyone who believes those treasuries are a burden on themselves or their kids or their grandkids, I will kindly take them off your hands for free. Just get in contact with me. In fact, I'll take all of the outstanding debt, all $16.7 of it, no problem. Then, guess what? None of you will have to worry about passing it along to your kids or your grandkids. That burden will be all on me. Anyway, that's it for now, folks. This is Mike Norman saying, see you next time. Bye-bye.